the acting attorney general's first foray into a congressional committee room igniting tensions. This hearing is pointless. And highlighting the divisions on Capitol Hill. It's our understanding that at least one briefing occurred in December before your decision not to recuse yourself on December 19th and Christmas Day. Is that correct? Uh, what's the basis for that question, sir? Yes or no. Mr. Chairman, I, I, again, what is the basis for your question? You're saying that it is your... Sure, I'm, a, I'm asking the questions. I only have five minutes. So please answer yes or no. No, Mr. Chairman, I, I'm going to... I, I, I don't, I, I, you were asking me a question. It is your understanding. Can you tell me where you get the basis? No, I'm not going to tell you that. I don't have time to get into that. And after a few more minutes of questioning, Whitaker tried to cut the chairman off. I see that your five minutes is up, and so... Um, <laughs> I'm... We, 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 I am here, I'm here voluntarily. I, we have agreed to five-minute rounds. And the committee. I think that's a fine place to end the five-minute rule. The, the committee will end, will, 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 will come to order. I will point out that we didn't enforce the five-minute rule on, 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 on attorney, uh, acting Attorney General Whitaker. Whitaker denied any conversations with the president or other White House officials about the special counsel's investigation, which Whitaker oversees, either before or after he took over the top spot at DOJ. At no time has the White House asked for, nor have I provided, any promises or commitments concerning the special counsel's investigation or any other investigation. I'm it's sorry. It's a yes or no question. Have you communicated anything uh, you learned in that briefing to pre about the investigation to President Trump? Yes or no? Mr. Chairman, as I've said earlier today in my opening remarks, I do not intend today to talk about my private conversations with the President of the United States. But to answer your okay. question, I have not Any talked to the President of the United States about the special counsel's investigation. Whitaker has come under fire for denouncing the Mueller investigation as a commentator before he joined the Justice Department, which Republicans quickly pointed out was not the reason for the hearing. Um, it's nothing but character assassination, harassment. Um, of, of our witness. Whitaker, who said he has been fully briefed on the Mueller investigation, declined to specifically condemn the label witch hunt used by the president to describe the Russia probe. I have not interfered with the special counsel's investigation. Are you overseeing a witch hunt? You'd stop a witch hunt, wouldn't you? Congressman, uh, it would be inappropriate for me to talk about an ongoing investigation. And Whitaker giving no specific indication how much longer it will last. We haven't received the report. Bob Mueller is going to finish his investigation when he wants to finish his investigation. And committee chairman Gerald Nadler says this isn't the end of the inquiry. Nadler says he's expecting written answers from Whitaker on a number of subjects, including specifics about conversations Whitaker had with the president or White House officials after being briefed on the special counsel's investigation. Since Nadler now says he doesn't believe Whitaker's insistence that these conversations never happened. And Jake Nadler, once again, he is threatening a subpoena if it's necessary to get all these answers. All right, Jessica Schneider, thank you so much. My experts are here. Karen, let me start with you. You're the, you're the former prosecutor at the table and the, the one with a, a law degree. Um, <laughs> did you hear the acting attorney general say anything that you found uh, or could be construed as inappropriate? Did, was there anything he said that gave you pause in terms of his impartiality and the Mueller probe? I thought the issue was his credibility. So he has been operating under a sort of skeptical lens of credibility because he is the acting and because he was never Senate confirmed. And so that has put a cloud over his entire tenure as acting attorney general. His performance today underscored that or highlighted it or, you know, just made it more apparent in terms of he was an inexperienced witness. He was combative with the members, he was disrespectful, and he was somewhat evasive. Now, on the most important question, I think, of the day as to whether or not he was actively undermining the special counsel's investigation, he answered that he wasn't, that he wasn't doing anything. And so that was an important uh, fact that he said today. But his entire uh, sort of other sorts of answers were evasive or seemed like he was trying to not be 100 percent clear. And so it just speaks to his overall credibility. And I think he came away um, not helping himself in that regard. And Simon, there, there was one moment uh, early on that got really contentious. Uh, take a listen. Now, in your capacity as acting attorney general, have you ever been asked to approve any request or action to be taken by the special counsel? Mr. Chairman, uh, I see that your five minutes is up, and so um, <laughs> I'm, we, 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 I am here, I'm here voluntarily. I, we have agreed to five-minute rounds. 
I, I, I'm the oldest one at the table, and I'll say, <laughs> I've, I've, I've never seen anything like that. I mean, that just doesn't happen. It's the congressional committee that runs the hearing. It's the congressional, it's the chairman who determines whether you've run out of time or not. And it does underscore the combative nature that the acting attorney general did really want to take uh, in this hearing today. But as we've seen so often, when uh, top uh, Trump administration officials go in a public venue or go before Congress, a lot of times they're d talking to an audience of one, and that's the president himself. Um, and I think that there were uh, moments where um, we, we didn't get a lot of new answers from him today. But one example where he may perhaps could have been speaking to the president was when he declined to say anything about whether this, the Mueller investigation was a witch hunt or not. Remember, that's a contrast from actually what Bill Barr said at his confirmation hearing. He put faith in Mueller and said someone like Mueller, someone with his credibility, would not run a witch hunt. And I thought that was a really interesting contrast between the two. Simone, what do you think? Look, I, I remember sitting here yesterday and talked about the indignation <laughs> with which um, Acting Attorney General Whitaker has engaged with mo the most senior members of Congress, and that is why they were essentially threatening him with a subpoena, because you have to come talk to us. And today, he underscored why that, that threat of a subpoena, in my opinion, is necessary um, for him to capitulate to Congress's demands. He got into many back and forths with various members of Congress when he could have just answered the question. And all I could think about was, what if this was um, Sally Yates or James Comey for, for that regard? I remember when James Comey came to Congress, you know, he, he was nobody's favorite, okay? The Democrats <laughs> or the Republicans. Um, but James Comey knew that he could not sit there with this righteous indignation um, for fear of what people would say about him, but frankly, how he would, he would be perceived from these members. I don't think Matthew Whitaker cared about that, and I think that's hurtful. Um, to him himself, but it also undermines his credibility. What do you have to hide, Acting Attorney General Whitaker? Why can't you just answer the question? What did you think? Well, I would just say that Comey always is, has a righteous air about him, <laughs> even if it's slightly more <laughs> polite. Favorite, even if it's slightly favorite. more polite. But look, I, maybe the plan was to make Barr look really good by contrast. <laughs> um, because look, this guy's a, Barr's on deck. This guy's going to be God suit. Uh, I think you saw the classic contrast between somebody who is closer in temperament and manner to Trump and somebody he likes and put in that position for a reason uh, because he is more punchy, he is uh, combative, and then you've got this very, like I said, his strength bar is that he is a conventional political figure, competent and sort of bland, uh, and I think, I think that's what's working for him and perhaps Barr's performance today makes it look a little better. Although we should point out that uh, he, Mr. Whitaker was not the only one uh, that had did, done a few push-ups before the hearing and his, <laughs> his blood was going. Uh, he, there were Democrats Lots who of Oh, yes, Congresswoman uh, Jamilia, uh, Pramilia Jayapal from Washington State got very riled up and passionate talking about uh, the kids at the border. I also think Jim Jordan, he was like, tell me about this redacted uh, memo. And I'm like, let, yes. let us see the memo. Well, here's, uh, here's one of the members of the House Democratic Leadership uh, Congress Congressman Hakeem Jeffries of New York. Take a listen to him. Who are you? Where did you come from? And how the heck did you become the head of the Department of Justice? So hopefully you can help me work through this confusion. All right, well, I'm, I mean, Congressman, not... I, I, Mr. Whitaker, that was a statement, not a question. Okay. I assume you know the difference. There was, a, there was a lot of that, too. <laughs> Look, House members, and t to be fair, senators as well, they eat their Wheaties, they prepare for these moments uh, and with any major congressional hearing. And I think Republicans on Capitol Hill are banking on the prospect that perhaps Democrats would get a little too eager and perhaps overreach on these oversight requests. Now, Democrats say what they've asked for from the administration is more than fair, but I think you saw a preview with that, with the subpoena fight yesterday um, on Capitol Hill over Whitaker's testimony. I mean, Republicans were furious. They're saying this just shows how Democrats want to make oversight into political theater. And that's why you've seen so much carefulness from Nancy Pelosi and Democrats on down on how they approach oversight, particularly on sensitive issues like the president's tax returns. Really raises the question, though, of what is the Senate waiting for to confirm the nominee for attorney general? I mean, he is a conservative traditional Republican. Um, he has the appropriate credentials. He's been the attorney general before. Not that all the members of Congress are going to agree with him about certain things. And he didn't give everybody the answers that they wanted when it came to the disposition of the report that the special counsel will write. But he is someone who is qualified to be the attorney general. And I think based on his confirmation hearing, the public and Congress were able to see that he has uh, the experience and the temperament and respects the office of the attorney general. I just thought this performance today was uh, 
degrading for the Department of Justice to see that this is their attorney general. Right Barr now. has been uh, reported out of committee, out of the Senate uh, Judiciary Committee, and now they're waiting for the, the vote on the, on the floor.